What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I care for my Hyophorbi Legenicalis. Now, you may have heard it called the bottle palm, the pig nut palm, the short bottle palm, the bottle cocoa, and I think where it hails from, natively, they call it the palmier bonbon. Alas, I am talking about the bottle palm here in America. This is a quite unique palm that I'm not too familiar with, though I've had this one for about a year now, and let me tell you, uh, there have been some difficulties uh, but it is a great plant to have if you can get past some of the difficulties that the plant does struggle with. Now let me go ahead and tell you where the plant hails from. Uh, it is the kind of subtropic and tropical areas. I think it's uh, the Meritus Islands, the Round Island. Uh, wherever that is, it's east of Madagascar and into the Indian Ocean. I'm not too familiar with that area, but like I said, it is kind of subtropical, tropical around the equator areas. Uh, so this plant actually is used to extreme high amounts of sunlight, uh, and a decent amount of water and rain and humidity, uh, and really warm, hot, humid temperatures. They do not like the cold at all, and if they are exposed to any coldness, whatsoever it can actually kind of kill the plant uh, and freezing frost temperatures you can forget about it this plant will not last through any kind of frost or freezing weather at all but as i was saying they are from around that area so uh, they do like a decent amount of sunlight this is actually considered a perennial dwarf evergreen palm tree so the plant should never lose its leaves uh, and it is kind of considered a dwarf tree uh, I think it takes the plant several years to get to its mature height of around 10 to 12 feet. And then trees that top out around 15 feet, which are very unusual for that to happen, but trees that do get up to that height take about a century or longer to get up to about 15 feet in height. So uh, they are kind of considered a dwarf tree. Uh, and if you're like me and you just love palm trees, uh, ones that can be in containers or planted outside, although if you do plant them outside, you do have to be in zones 10A to 11, so Southern Florida, Southern California, Southern Texas, Hawaii, those areas you can plant these guys outside. Anywhere else, they need to be in a container and brought in when the temperatures get lower than 50 degrees. If it's going to be lower than 50 degrees, make sure you bring this guy in first uh, because they don't like cold temperatures. I will tell you they have a very kind of uh, unique trunk that gives it its name. Uh, it is called the bottle palm and the pig nut palm for good reason. Uh, the bottle palm is because the bottom of the bottle palm trunk actually kind of swells out and expands uh, and then as it gets older it expands a little bit more and then when it gets fully mature it will tend to elongate more and get rather tall and then kind of lose its whole bottle formation look-alike uh, but there for a while quite a while it will actually have this bulbous fat kind of elephant foot trunk and uh, it's got a really pretty kind of textured uh, layer uh, but it will have just kind of one stalk, one trunk, uh, and it will sport uh, ring scars all the way up through it too. And they're not really known for having this extensive crown. Usually it's about a half dozen, uh, seven or eight even sometimes, uh, little leaflets that kind of shoot off the crowns. Uh, so they don't have an extensive crown as I was saying but they do get kind of long. Like I said, the plant will only get to be about 10 to 12 feet tall, maximum, maybe 15, depending on how good the situation or its living conditions are. But the leaves and the leaflets will actually get to about six to 10 feet long too. So it almost looks a little Willy Wonka-ish, uh, but that gives it all of its good sight and what it's known for and how it looks too. Uh, but it, these little leaflets that come off the top, this is a bipinnate leaf, and the leaflets uh, are about 140 pairs or 140 leaflets that kind of come off. And these leaflets here can reach up to about two feet long on a fully grown mature tree. They will actually get flowers too, though not that often, especially if you grow them indoors. They usually have to be outside in a well kind of uh, 
great environment for the plant and they will get an inflorescence and what I mean by that is they'll have this huge kind of cluster of kind of cream colored flowers right around where this stalk meets the crown of the plant uh, and what happens there is um, the female flowers will actually start to die back and as they do they'll change from white to kind of a silvery blue to black and then they'll develop the seeds uh, and the fruit will actually contain one seed inside of each little fruit carpule or whatever you want to call it. But they do call it the pignut palm because they do use those fruits to kind of give fodder to uh, pigs. So the scientific name, the hyophorb, or however you pronounce it, is Greek for pig or hog, and forb is Greek for uh, food or fodder. So together that does give you the pignut palm, uh, and that's where they get that common name from as well. Uh, but like I said, in its native areas, <laughs> it's used to a lot of direct sunlight. So whenever you're placing this palm, it needs to be someplace that it gets a lot of direct sunlight, at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight a day. Uh, and then, even if it's going to be really extent uh, harsh sunlight, that is okay for this palm, especially if you continue to water it regularly. Now getting into water you have to be kind of careful because with any kind of palm too much can be a bad thing and then not enough can be a bad thing as well. So you got to find that sweet spot with these guys as well. It tends to be a little okay if you give them uh, dry soils for quite a time but you kind of want to avoid that. You don't want them to be too dry but you do want them to have that kind of sweet spot that kind of is the consistency of a wrung out sponge to where it is a little moist but it's not super saturated. I know that really probably doesn't help much but with mine, I usually water him. If the temperatures are gonna be over 85 to 90 degrees in a day, I'll go ahead and water him once. Uh, and if it is up into these triple digits, I will go ahead and water him once, probably twice of that day too. Uh, they do like a little bit of moisture, but they can go some without having a whole lot of moisture in there too. But you do wanna be a little consistent when watering these guys because infrequent watering schedules can kinda of mess them up as well. Now you can tell with mine, especially this front leaf right here, I kind of wanted to bring a little bit of attention to that. You can tell he's getting these rather brown, crusty, hard spots on there that leads me to believe one of two things. One, he's having a problem they call tapping with these palms. Now tapping occurs when you feed them or you water them right out of the tap rather. Uh, tap water always consists of a lot of salts, especially here in Kentucky where we have a lot of uh, limestone rich water and a lot of uh, salt added to our water to kind of soften it up. It's got a lot of chlorine and fluoride and other chemicals in there that kind of wreak havoc on a palm. So uh, I have recently started to switch him to rainwater and then now that it's gotten really cold, uh, just kind of switching back to distilled water. And I think that's kind of given him an easier time, uh, but it's been here recently that I've done that, that I'm hoping that it'll actually kind of uh, get rid of some of these red or kind of brown unsightly spots on here that are leaving him discolored and unsightly. Now, uh, my next worry is that he's having a problem with uh, potassium deficiencies. Now typically palms, uh, bottle palms even, that have a problem with potassium deficiencies, the margins of the leaves begin to get really yellow or brown, and then they also kind of develop kind of orange or yellow or even brown spots or flecks throughout the plant. And you can kind of tell on top and bottom of each leaflet that I can see a lot of kind of reddish, brownish, kind of uh, darker spots that lead me to believe that he may be suffering from a potassium deficiency. And then also, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but he's starting to get a new leaflet that's coming out here in the middle. That's where new leaves will actually begin to kind of form into the crown. But uh, with new leaflets, any plants that struggle with a potassium deficiency, they will actually affect the new leaflets as well and give them kind of brown, yellowish margins. Uh, red, yellow, or orange kind of leaf spots and discoloration on the spots and kind of withering new leaflets on there too. Now it is very important to be careful whenever you're treating a palm with potassium deficiency. In doing so, you may inadvertently uh, affect the magnesium of the plant too and cause a magnesium deficiency when trying to treat the potassium deficiency too. So in treating a magnesium deficiency or a potassium deficiency in your palm, you'll want to kind of address both of those and add those in as well. Now, I repotted him uh, at the beginning of the spring in this uh, 
upcoming year, this past year I did, and I used the miracle Grow uh, Palm, Cacti, and Citrus soil. Uh, so he's only been in here for about 10 months now, maybe nine, somewhere around that range. Uh, and as we know, they do go ahead and with uh, miracle Grow feed the plants for about six months. So I didn't want to go ahead, especially with the onset of fall and winter, and go ahead and start feeding him some uh, because they don't really go dormant, but they do slow down drastically for the slower months. So I didn't want to go ahead and feed him and then give him a sudden boost of energy and make him think that, you know, good times are on the corner and light's going to be coming through and he's going to need to wake back up. So I wanted to keep him in the same position that I had him in now and the same situation. I can also take my pruning shears and kind of cut these little spots off the leaf tips and the leaf margins and hope that I can remove some of this unsightly uh, discoloration on these leaves and then in the spring and summer moving back outside and hope that uh, the bad times are behind us and the good times are right around the corner. All right, now with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting on him to remove some of this discolored leaf tips and hope that I can bring in some better change for him too. Now, as I always say, whenever you do this, you want to sanitize your pruning shears and any other tools that may be coming into contact with your plant at all. Uh, I always use 99% alcohol on there, uh, 91 to 92 is good too, uh, but Cameraman uses the alcohol too for a lot of his electronic uh, situations and projects that he has to do for re-soldering and rewiring, so I just use it to make sure that all my sanitizing needs are met and uh, adequate too. So just kind of cut off right at the uh, line that you see any kind of brown discoloration and then try not to cut into the green if you don't have to. But you do want to kind of cut all the uh, yellow and brown and red spots out if possible. Alright, now that that's taken care of, I do want to tell you that uh, any kind of palm tree that is placed in a decent amount of soil, one that's reputable and has added nutrients and micronutrients and all that, should only need to be fertilized once, maybe twice a year, uh, depending on your situation and how your plant is and uh, what all it's gone through in life. You just kind of want to pay attention. Obviously, this is kind of a sicker palm. So uh, in the spring, I'm probably going to hit it with some fish emulsion or some bone meal. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite fertilizers to use is the Espoma Organic uh, Holly and Palm fertilizer. And you can actually use that uh, for hibiscus and a lot of your tropical trees as well. But it is formulated uh, more so for palm trees and hibiscus trees. I believe it actually has an NPK ratio of four, one, and five, somewhere in there. Uh, but it is formulated to meet the uh, micro and macro nutrients. And it's got some additional trace elements uh, that your palm trees need in order to do their all palm thing and <coughs> take care of themselves the way they need to. Uh, in their natural environments, like I said, in the Meritus Islands, uh, a round island is where they're kind of native to, too. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of natural bottle palms in the environments that they're from. Uh, I think they are listed as critically endangered, and uh, I think it's actually Round Island that uh, is the other island they are from. And at last count, they found that there was only about 10 palm bottle palm trees in that uh, environment so like I said they are critically endangered uh, but its popularity with organic or with gardeners has actually helped save it uh, because there are plenty of places I don't know that you could actually go to that you probably wouldn't be able to see one of these especially a lot of uh, arboreums a lot of garden centers have these out I go to Lowe's and Home Depot here in Kentucky and you can see a lot of bottle palms uh, so their popularity has actually helped spare them uh, and to keep them on the brink from actually going extinct. Uh, but as far as them being out in nature on their own and taking care of themselves, 
they are listed as critically endangered. And that's mostly not just because of habitat loss and degradation, uh, but I think the animals around that area kind of feed on the uh, young ones too. So it's hard to actually kind of keep them growing up and maturing and actually living a long full life. Like I said, they can live over 100, 150, 200 years uh, for these trees, uh, but there aren't too many in the wild around the world that have grown naturally. And also, if you're like me, and you're one that loves tropical trees, palm trees, uh, but you live in an area just shy of 10A to 11, so you're getting cold, harsh, wet winters, uh, you might want to look into a different palm tree in the same family that's called the spindle palm tree. It actually has the same kind of bottle area trunk that this guy has, uh, and the leaflets look a lot similar too. Uh, but one of the main differences for that tree and this tree is the spindle palm is a lot more cold hardy and cold tolerant than the bottom palm. Like I said, the bottle palm actually has to be brought indoors whenever it's going to be below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but the spindle palm can actually take a light frost and cold temperatures for a little bit of time. This guy, if you were to leave any of the seedlings out and it got below 50 or 40 to 50 degrees, uh, really cold temperatures can actually arrest the growth rate of the seedlings of this tree. Uh, and then like I said, frost will just flat out kill this tree too. So make sure that you set an alarm and you don't leave your bottled palm tree out uh, because uh, frost will kill your tree. Soil, I do say that they can tolerate a wide range of soils. Uh, they do like a lot of tropical kind of soils like volcanic soils, uh, sandy soils, uh, some loamy soils are okay. Uh, and when talking about soil pH, you want it to be neutral. Uh, they can tolerate some acidity in some alkaline soils, but I wouldn't go any further than 6.5 on up to about 7.5, maybe 7.8, somewhere around that range. Uh, but I'd probably stop at around 7.5 uh, just because, like I said, they do like natural soils. They don't like it too acidic and they don't like it alkaline either. Like I said, uh, they do like some organic mixture in there. I do put a little bit of sand in mine, horticultural grade, uh, a little bit of sphagnum moss, uh, mostly just kind of soil that's made for palm trees, and then kind of come in and fertilize it with some bone meal and some fish emulsion too. Uh, but you can't really just kind of make your own concoction whenever it comes to palm fertilizers. If you do, you, more often than not, you'll end up leaving a lot of the trace elements or the micronutrients out of there uh, because they do have a certain list of micronutrients they need in order to remain healthy. And I can kind of tell that that's probably what's gone on here is that he hasn't got a good feeding here recently. So he is starting to look a little sickly along with that uh, harsher tap water that we have here in Kentucky. So always make sure you're fertilizing with a decent reputable fertilizer for a palm tree uh, and one that is a slow kind of a release fertilizer because that will give it the right amount of nutrients for the extended period of time that your palm tree needs to feed on. So make sure you're paying attention to that too. Like I said, they always have to be able to drain quickly. So you do want to put some sand or some perlite or some uh, pumice down in there to actually help with the water retention too. Uh, like I said, they do need a uh, average amount of water, especially the younger ones. They need to be watered quite regularly. <clears throat> but uh, established palms can go a little bit without uh, too much water. Uh, they are slightly drought tolerant. I won't go ahead and say that they are drought tolerant, but uh, prolonged times without water won't necessarily kill the tree. And they often think that the reason why it has this huge bulbous trunk was for water storage, but they're not 100% sure on that either. So just make sure you go ahead and water it regularly and you're paying attention to the humidity too. Uh, like I said, where they're from, they get a decent amount of humidity. Uh, so if you bring them indoors for the winter and fall times and it's got a completely different humidity level than what they were getting outside, uh, then that can kind of mess your palm tree up too. So make sure you pay attention to that. I keep the indoor humidity range in my house around 35 to 40% and he's been happy with that so far. Uh, if you keep it bone dry, you will kind of have a problem with uh, spider mites aphids, mealybugs, 
uh, bugs that like it uh, to be really kind of bone dry and are kind of scared of water. So if you do bring them indoors, just make sure that you are kind of watering them uh, regularly and then you're keeping the humidity levels in check too uh, that way you'll keep predators and any kind of pests at bay with your tree. Now if you are from the southern parts of the nation and uh, southern Florida, California, Texas, uh, they do okay on the coast. They are a little bit salt tolerant uh, but they do better inland too uh, and they fare fairly well with hurricane force winds so if you are looking for kind of a dwarf unique palm tree to have this is one that you should consider adding to your collection uh, just because they are kind of salt tolerant they can handle the sprays and they can handle that kind of strong hurricane force winds too they do have really kind of strong uh, petioles and leaflets so you don't have to worry about them coming in and snapping them off uh, but like I said, with two uh, strong force winds, they can be kind of a problem. But these guys usually hail pretty nice in that uh, regard. All right, guys, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my patrons. I want to give a special shout out to my top tier tree patrons like Dan. Thank you. I'd like to give another shout out to David and Heather. If you'd like to give a donation to my channel through Patreon, please check the link in the description box below. As always, any donations go to helping the channel thrive and stay alive. All right, guys, this has been Justin reminding you that if you can, go out and plant a tree. Let's reforest the world. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.